If you like samurai and Japanese culture in your video games and are looking for something beyond Ghost of Tsushima, there might be something rather interesting coming up soon. Flying Wild Hog's side-scrolling samurai action title Trek to Yomi has looked like an exciting prospect since the day it was announced, impressive with everything from its slick-looking combat to its gorgeous black and white visual aesthetic. With each new showing, we've grown more and more curious about the game, and ahead of its imminent launch on May 5th, here we'll be taking a look at some key points that you should know about it. Premise Trek to Yomi is set in Japan in the Edo period. You play Hiroki, a young swordsman who is tasked by a dying master to protect his village from looming threats. Bound by duty and honor to fulfill his master's dying wish, Hiroki sets out on a voyage to protect those he loves. Interestingly, while Trek to Yomi is of course basing its setting on a historical era, the game will also rope mythological and folklore elements into its story. But the full extent of their involvement remains to be seen. Authenticity Authenticity in depiction and attention to detail are important in any story that bases itself on real-world culture and time periods, and Trek to Yomi developer Flying Wild Hog seems to have gone to quite some lengths to ensure that the game accurately portrays what it's been inspired by. In a recent interview with Gaming Bolt, game director Marcin Kreispen explained that Flying Wild Hog worked with Akitebai Matsunaga, a historian who specializes in the Edo period who helped with everything from translations and dialogue to lore and more. Combat Combat has to be one of the priorities of any game where you're stepping into the shoes of a samurai, and Trek to Yomi, appropriately enough, for its subject material is looking to deliver fast and precise action on that front. In addition to light and melee attacks, players will also have to block and parry enemy attacks with perfectly timed blocks, also providing openings for quick counterattacks. Combining attacks with directional inputs is also a key component, and players will have to observe their enemy's stance and decide how to approach fights accordingly. Progression Trek to Yomi is going to be a pretty brief experience, more on that in a bit, but it's not going to be static from start to finish. Some light progression elements are thrown in as well. Various new weapons and combo attacks will be unlocked during the course of the story, but some will be optional and as such completely missable, allowing players to further expand their arsenal and moveset. Throughout the course of the game, new weapons unlocked will include shurikens and azutsu bows and more. Shrines Trek to Yomi's take on checkpoints is quite interesting. Every so often, players will come across shrines in the world that can be used to replenish your health and stamina and all around provide a temporary safe haven for you. But there's a catch. Each shrine can only be used just once in a single playthrough, which means you'll always have to decide whether you want to use a shrine to replenish yourself or hold off on doing that until later and risk pushing ahead. Difficulty how games approach difficulty is something that can often make or break an experience for different sections of the audience. So what exactly is Trek to Yomi doing on this front? The shrines, the precise combat, and boss fights collectively are promising a game that will challenge players at least on some level. That said, this is clearly a game that's emphasizing its cinematic nature first and foremost, so those who are looking for an easier experience can select a mode that delivers just that. Length as mentioned earlier, Trek to Yomi is not going to be a very long game. Game director Marcin Crispin told Gaming Bolt in a recent interview that on normal difficulty it will take around 5 hours to see to completion. Quote, We wanted to achieve this cinematic experience in order to show the player our story and acquaint them with the Edo period via collectibles. End quote. Crispin explained, quote, The game's length determined many points in the game design. Too many features or too difficult of combat would be hard to introduce in that short amount of time. Retaining the feeling of a classic samurai movie was key." End quote. Optional content Though Trek to Yomi is going to have a pretty short runtime, its developers have assured that there will be a decent amount of optional content in there for those who want to dive deeper into the game. In addition to collectibles and optional NPC conversations to seek out to learn more about the story and lore, as well as the unlockable weapons and combos we mentioned earlier, Trek to Yomi will also have four unique endings. One Hit Kill Mode Here's another piece of optional content for those who want to stick with the game after the credits have rolled. Once you finish Trek to Yomi, you'll unlock a one hit kill mode, 
It'll feature much faster and more challenging combat, where one mistake might very likely be lethal. If you're looking for a more challenging experience, this might be worth checking out. PS5 and Xbox Series X and S Like most other games releasing right now, Trek to Yomi is going to be a cross-gen title, and while there's no word yet on exactly how it's going to run, on PS4 and Xbox One, we do know what to expect from the new gen versions. Game director Marcin Crispin recently confirmed to Gaming Bolt that Trek to Yomi will run at 4K and 60 frames per second on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Steam Deck Meanwhile, what about the Steam Deck? Valve's portable gaming PC doesn't exactly have a lot of market penetration yet, given that supplies are limited and that it hasn't been out long yet. But those who do have the device will be able to play Trek to Yomi on it. Speaking to Gaming Bolt, Crispin said that thanks to the optimization Flying Wild Hog did for the game, on PS4 and Xbox it should work well on the Steam Deck as well, with further optimization, if any, coming down the line once the game has been released. PC Requirements Recommended system requirements for Trek to Yomi's PC version haven't been confirmed yet, but we do know what kind of a rig you'll need at minimum to be able to run the game. Unsurprisingly, the requirements aren't too demanding. On minimum settings, you'll need 4GB of RAM, 3GB of storage space, a GeForce 9600 GT, 512MB, and an Intel Core i3-4160. Game Pass We've been seeing smaller and indie releases leveraging the benefits of Xbox Game Pass, with greater frequency, with a great number of them deciding to launch on the subscription service day and date. Trek to Yomi will be another one of those, with publisher Devolver Digital confirming that the game will be available via Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass right at launch. Price As an indie game, and a brief one at that, Trek to Yomi isn't the sort of game that launches at a steep price. And Devolver, as you may have expected, isn't going to go off course here. When the game launches for PC and consoles on May 5th, if you don't get it via Game Pass and decide to purchase it, you'll have to shell out $19.99. Potential Switch Version Trek to Yomi is launching in a few days for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC, but many have wondered if a Switch version is also in the pipeline, especially given the large audiences that indie games usually find on Nintendo's hybrid platform. While that isn't part of the plan yet, it seems it's something Flying Wild Hog hasn't completely ruled out. Chris Pinn said to Gaming Bolt in an interview, quote, the game will be available on five platforms on its release, but we don't exclude the possibility of there being a Switch version in the future, end quote. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.